Here are 10 paint colors that you can use on the outside of your home. Whether your house is made of brick, siding, or stucco, these are paint color ideas that you can use to spruce up your curb appeal. What we'll do here is we'll start with some tried and true exterior paint colors and get more and more bold and unique as we go along. We're going from safe to sassy. If you're brave enough for number 10, I commend you. Let's start with Swiss Coffee, OC45. This is quite possibly my favorite white paint color to use on the outside of your home because it's clean and it's sophisticated. Most importantly, however, it's not too bright, which could be an issue when painting outside. It also has just the right amount of warmth to it, which feels really balanced when used outside with that cool natural sunlight. You won't really notice the natural creaminess in this color. You'll just end up with a nice, pleasant white that your jealous neighbors will envy because that's what it's all about, right? Next up we have Misty Gray. This is another white paint color with a similar lightness value to the last one, but what makes it a tad bit more unique is the fact that it has a cool color cast. This means that instead of a soft, creamy warmth, we almost see a pale blue undertone coming through here. It's still a pretty bright white when used on the outside of your home. The only thing is, it'll feel cooler, almost like a light icy gray. If you are intentionally looking for your house to look pretty cool, both literally and figuratively, see what I did there, then this is a good choice for an off-white. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far and you're looking for more painting and decorating related videos, then consider subscribing. So off-whites, they're pretty straightforward, right? Let's add some color to these colors. Stone Hearth is a stony gray that has just a hint of warm brown mixed in. It's not quite gray or brown. It's more of a taupe that combines these two colors together. And anything with the word stone in its name is going to look mighty fine outside. The bit of warmth found in this color will be neutralized a bit by the sun, kind of like Swiss coffee was. And this means it'll feel really neutral right down the middle. Quick little side note, I find that paint colors look very different when you use them outside versus inside. So if you're the type of person to look at color chips at your local paint store, just know that when you paint the outside of your home, with any color, make sure you get a chance to look at it outside before you commit to it. Warm grays like Stone Hearth will feel closer to gray and grays will look cool or even green or blue leaning. When in doubt, just use our favorite tester boards on the planet, Mighty Boards. They are large, paintable and flexible boards that are not just for interior use, but exterior as well. Painting the outside of your home can easily be a five figure project. That's a lot of dough. So before you buy any premium exterior paint, get a tester or two, get some Mighty Boards and test those colors out properly. I'll leave Mighty Boards information down below if you wanna get more information on them or pick some up for yourself. We're going to get a bit darker with our paint colors now. In fact, this is one of the darkest colors on this list, but it's still not too scary of a choice for a lot of you because it is in fact a neutral gray. It's called Amherst Gray, and it ends up being a very versatile earthy gray that commits to the cooler side of things. There's not a lot of visible warmth here, especially when you use it outside. And in fact, you tend to see a little bit of a green undertone happening, but it's very subtle and overall feels very rich. An excellent choice for a slate gray that complements modern architecture very well. We're just about at the halfway point and now we're gonna start to see a little more color hue coming through with these next few choices. Taking things into a different direction, we now have Standish White and the name may suggest that we just have another off-white here. What's going on, James? But this color has more depth than the other whites we talked about earlier on. It also has more of a creamy quality that is proudly on display. I would still say it's relatively neutral, but if you're sensitive to cream or yellow, this is one to be mindful of. The next color takes things into an even brighter direction with a more heavy-handed use of gold and yellow. The color is called Golden Lab. And this is one you will not mistake for a beige like the last one. Golden Lab has almost a Dijon mustard yellow that is fairly soft, but still prominent. You will notice that yellow in almost any circumstance you use this, but that could be the perfect choice for your home if you want a bit of fun and vibrancy. A color that I love to use outside for obvious reasons 
is green. Because depending on where you are, you're probably gonna see lots of green in the form of surrounding flora or plant life for the layman. Georgian green is a fairly muted olive green that has a gentle touch of warmth to help it feel balanced. It's a good idea to have that warm undertone present in your green paint colors because otherwise it can go into mint territory sometimes, which could be what you're going for, but for most people, this almost khaki color is the safer bet. Still a bolder choice than gray, beige, or grayish, but as you can tell, we're starting to see more and more color coming through. Next, we have the darkest color on this list, definitely the most saturated of the bunch, but it's also a classic choice. So rich, but not overly risky. It's called Boston Brick, and it's a combination of red, brown, and a bit of orange to create almost a slightly rusty red that mimics the brick it was named after. This is a color that you'll see on a lot of houses naturally without paint, but it becomes a more interesting choice when you're using it on siding or stucco to replicate that brick color on different surfaces. It is a color that will make a statement without sticking out like a sore thumb. So it has that likable quality that makes it surprisingly reasonable to use. Second last color choice is one that doesn't feel overly natural as a house color choice, but when it works, it's absolutely beautiful. The color is called Buxton Blue, and there are certain properties that this color suits perfectly. But when you bring this color into a more landlocked suburb, for example, that's kind of riddled with neutrals, it can be a tougher decision. But hey, your house could become the standout amongst a bunch of off-white abodes. Maybe Buxton Blue's for you. This last color is possibly the most unusual choice of the bunch, and it's not going to be for everyone. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. If you've watched other videos or you've read some blogs about outside paint colors, this is one that you won't see very often. It's the soft muted purple called Lavender Mist. And on the right house with the right trim and the accent colors to go alongside it, this could be a very special exterior paint choice. Definitely the most adventurous choice of the bunch for me and probably better suited for siding rather than brick or stucco. Which of these 10 paint colors would you paint your house with? Let me know down below and have a colorful day.